Hi, um, I haven't done a DID related video for a while, so I was going to uh, talk a bit about uh, progress towards integration. So, um, you know, integration isn't uh, necessarily for everyone's system. In my case, it um, it feels like the right thing. <laughs> um, I guess. Um, Originally, of course, each of them were waiting for, each of my alters were waiting for the other ones to die or disappear so they can have a life, run the body, etc. Um, the realisation that each was um, an alter within a DID system was very shocking uh, reality and despairing reality to many of them. And once I, as the core self, became aware that I wasn't a ghost, that I was um, a whole human being who could take my life personally and run the body and use my voice. Uh, I at first was, uh, really felt so incompetent to, uh, to run this team. Um, I'd always been just the observer or a kind of conduit for the typed expression of the team. I felt very peripheral, <laughs> disposable. Um, uh, they felt like so much more bigger selves than me, but I have some skills that they didn't have. I, in the early days, I was being referred to as the glue and um, I think I have become the glue. I have somehow uh, a, a maternal kind of ability to, to facilitate and guide each of the others to face their, where they've come from and uh, their relationships to each other and all the things that they fear and run from. And so on that road, uh, some of the others started with a kind of tree plotting out <laughs> where they each remember coming in. And then as their memories fleshed out, we could see that they'd simultaneously ran their lives since, you know, most of them had all been around since I was between two and four years old. And then we went to doing integration maps, plotting where everybody was on the map and how they were getting to know each other, what the clashes were, what their uh, extreme differences were. And then um, we, one day, Polly, who is one of the, the child alters, or what people call a little, Polly always communicated well with objects and she wanted to represent every member of the team with a toy and um, so that she could physically play out what they were like and what they were doing and saying about each other. And as she chose one for each of the team, they would then start to argue whether or not they liked what she'd chosen, <laughs> whether they wanted to go and get something else. Um, uh, whether they liked what their representative, we call them representatives, were wearing, <laughs> um, who they wanted to sit next to, who they couldn't stand. <laughs> so Polly's strategy of representing them all was a really fabulous strategy because then uh, I could start to uh, help them through their distress <laughs> by other representatives. So instead of um, uh, the constant switching, switching where it's all with this body, I would feel their stuff, but it would be projected onto the object that represented them. So over time they became attached to their own representatives. So it's not the same as... Uh, the littles go get their soft toys. It was that one of our littles wanted to represent every member of the team with a toy and over time each of them, even the ones that hated toys and hated the idea, insisted that if they were going to be represented by one, they had some say in it. So it actually became quite good. So um, I could then go and commune uh, at the end of a, a day with each of these representatives and if one of them was having some kind of big stuff happen, I generally find that 
there'd be all this emotional release and angst and I would just then sit and kind of counsel that part of me in co-consciousness instead of experiencing my life with constant switching and this just was so much easier to have little private counseling sessions at the end of each day and see who in my team had the biggest dramas going on or uh, confusions and stuff so I was going to introduce you just to the representatives um, I guess the first one I will introduce you to is Polly because Polly um, was the one that started the whole representative system <laughs> Now, this is of course not Polly. So, uh, people have met Polly, so she mm, tends to be quite squealy, very sensory, uh, loves certain types of fabrics and colors, and um, uh, yeah, so, and she has a very particular type of communication and a very particular type of thinking. Her world is a very symbolic and object-based world <laughs> and her her communication is very telegraphic. Um, uh, so anyway, she, that's her. And although we have a lot of dramas about dance, that was not from her background. So she's quite happy to be dressed in a pink ballet thing, um, which some of the others had really big, trauma about and got really upset about um so sometimes that was kind of good because then I got to count counsel the different ones about why they were so incredibly hung up uh, this became Carol so originally there was another one uh representative which was Carol and she really couldn't cope with it uh she got really distressed said it was deformed uh she wanted one that represented a girl um, a fun girl and I think this one happened to mm, I don't know appeal to her it's kind of little rainbow thing and she saw herself as you know as the happy girl the lucky girl but she's actually really phobic of all the dance kind of thing so she was very happy that uh, that wasn't put on her um, we have here uh, Marnie Marnie uh was our kind of uh our anarchist our uh sort of four letter word woman um our road rage girl she has quite a bit of um she's done a lot of uh apathy and really struggling to work with trust and she wanted to be dressed in overalls so i actually had to make her <laughs> overalls and then she wanted a pouch and to put an um, another version of herself in here. She said that she hadn't learned to love herself, so she wanted to carry herself around until she could get used to being able to love herself. And slowly uh, she's getting used to that. Uh, she couldn't stand her representatives sitting near anyone else. She felt that everyone else in the team couldn't stand her, that she was thrown out of the team long ago and and that she was unlikable, etc. So having them, all their representatives together in, in a basket <laughs> is actually a really therapeutic and challenging thing. Um, and slowly now they have made peace with themselves, each other. Um, this one here is Addie. So Addie... Oh, well, that's not Addie, but it's Addie's representative. And Addie uh, used to be our Auntie Donna, um, quite the the pleaser, the one that had a lot of eating difficulty and driven by a lot of generalised anxiety, constant fear, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And what was interesting was that Addie and Marnie, couldn't cope with each other at all and slowly by talking them through that by uh you know them picking up the representative or me picking up the representative and them kind of coming on board because I'm holding their representative and eventually we could manage to actually put them together and say you need to help each other with things like one of you knows 
what it is to live without rage. The other one um, doesn't know what it is to be really gutsy um, and stand up for herself. So how about you two lend <laughs> your strengths and um, see if you can't support each other? And so that was um, was quite useful uh, and it's taken a long, long time because um, some of them, their heads fall off and some really go to war. It's been really hard. This one was the representative of Anne. She wanted to wear little earrings, so we have earrings for her. And originally she insisted that she was a cat and because she wouldn't speak, I asked her if she would be able to have the courage to become a cat girl and she did then be able to become a cat girl. And um, uh, so she's quite attached to this representative now. Anne is the main one who's our artist and she is very quiet if not silent. Both her and Addie dealt with selective mutism um, uh, and uh, has had a lot of difficulty with, uh, with being in company with people. Uh, she's certainly not uh, you know, one of our performers or anything. Um, this one here is Da. So Da was um, saw herself as a gay male and uh, represented herself with this uh, gibbon. And eventually Da came to terms with the different uh, trauma stuff that had made it only safe to be um, male and um accepted to try out wearing a dress and said insisted that this was a kilt it was not a dress so um eventually dar is coming to terms with all that stuff so dar was uh very much our houdini our onboard comedian and um and quite our, our meet and greet uh surrealist entrepreneur uh, person so and so sometimes I would sit Anne and Dar <laughs> and have them try and help each other <laughs> you know Anne lending some degree of peace to Dar so that she knows she doesn't have to be silly and funny uh, all the time and equally that Anne can know that social reality is not as frightening as she feels it is. Um. Willie couldn't stand being represented by toys and it took Willie a long time to stand having clothes on. So Willie saw herself as a male and it took a long time for her to gradually accept what had happened that made it safer for her to be male than female and to um, be able to handle addressing those things um, as part of overcoming them. And so Willie's very much our serious, uh, science-minded, uh, logic, logic uh, systematician, scientist person. Um, and putting, uh, putting Willie together with Da has been really good. So we have this total silly dag with this really, this other one that doesn't really trust uh, that kind of stuff so that they can come to terms with what each other have as strengths. Um, and Rose, it's Rose, who's our Italian, um, and quite sociable, um, and Rose didn't feel like she could relate, relate a lot to much of the other team, and slowly she has become very much, um, befriended by the rest of the team, which is really great. We have a cat, <laughs> and the cat's name is Ning, and it took a long time to get near speech and we are starting to get there. It's very hard to communicate with an altar when they uh, only make noises and uh, and you have to um, go with it and, and listen to the flashbacks and listen to the feelings. It's our bear. We have a bear in the team so this is the representative of our bear. Our bear is uh, a very feral uh, early part that defended 
we have a rabbit. Um, so the rabbit uh, is one that helps uh, some of the ones that struggle to eat, to be able to eat. And um, so slowly uh, it's helped to, that you know, being able to have them all together as a team has helped them to be able to learn to get along and respect and appreciate each other um, and slowly work on becoming less uh, less aversive to what each other are. <laughs>